All right, this uh, is a project that I really like to do. I'm calling this the Mug Project. And this is um, a revised version of an earlier version that I've done in the past with some extra tips since I've learned this program a little bit more. I'd like to share that with you. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start this project on the front plane, create a sketch on that plane, and then I like to rotate to the front plane view and then hide the planes with a P key on the keyboard so I have a nice empty work area. The first thing I'm going to do is dra draw a construction line and I'm going to attach the bottom of it to the point of origin just so I have a reference point in my drawing. And right now the scale doesn't really matter but I'm going to try to get around 75 millimeters tall. Alright, we reposition here so you can see that. All right now I'm going to create just a very basic outline for my mug and I'm going to use the line tool just to make it simple and quick. So I'm going to form the base which will be a little bit narrower than the top. And then I'm going to draw just an angle here to make it interesting. You can vary it by you know making a vertical and a horizontal and then maybe a angle whatever you want to do to be fancy. And then I'm going to make sure that the top of my side wall is equal to the, the height of my construction line. Just so I can use that as a reference point and everything is the same height when I'm done. So I'm referencing that just by hovering over the end point and then carefully following that dotted line over until I get the vertical constraint there on the screen. And then I'm going to click and that means that this line is vertical, but it's also horizontally aligned with that point. So I'm done drawing my lines right now. So I'm going to click the escape key on the keyboard. And now what I want to do is our mug has to have thickness. So there has to be some sort of you know, side wall. This is right now has zero thickness. So I'm going to offset <clears throat> by lines. The offset tool is found at the top click the tool and then you just simply click the lines that you want to offset. I want to offset inward so here I have an arrow that's pointing to the outside. I can grab that arrow and adjust it in until it reverses the direction or you can quickly just click on the arrow and it will reverse directions. Then I'm looking for a thickness oh, around 4 millimeters. And I'm going to add more lines to this offset. So I'm going to click all the lines that I created before. Make sure I click all of them. So now I've created an offset of the outside of my mug. When you're done selecting all the offset lines, you simply need to click anywhere to accept the offset. And then the last step is to choose the uh, distance of the offset. So I'm going to choose, um, let's do like 3.5 millimeters. All right, so now I need this region to be completely enclosed. And I have a hole here at the top and at the base here where they intersect the construction line. There's actually a gap there. So I need to close that in with a solid line. So I'm going to grab the line tool and just connect the dots at the top then also connect the dots at the bottom. So now it's an enclosed region and it should shade it in with a light gray color indicating that's completely enclosed. Now I'm ready to move on to the next step which is the exciting part. I'm going to escape out of any tools and accept my sketch. And the next thing I'm going to do is use the revolve tool at the top. And I'm going to choose the region that I just created, the sidewall of my mug. This is going to re revolve around the axis of, so you need to select it, sorry. I skipped that step rather quickly. So the first thing you need to do is choose the faces and sketch regions to revolve. That is this region that we just created. Then to move on to the revolve axis, you need to click in that you know, light, like pink area. Um, and then now that this is blue, it's waiting for me to select the axis. So I'm just going to click on my construction line to choose that as the axis 
to revolve around. And now you can see that I have created a cup. It's not quite a mug yet. So that's the first goal in this project is to create the cup parts of the mug. All right. So now that I have that accomplished, I'm just going to simply hide the part. I'm going to click to accept in my revolve, which creates my first solid. And I'm going to hide this part so I can continue sketching. Now when you revolve something, and a lot of times when you extrude a region, it automatically hides the sketch that it was created from. Now I want to re reveal this sketch again so I can see the outline of my mug here. And I'm going to create another sketch for my handle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the sketch tool. I'm going to choose the front plane from the list on the left. And now I'm ready to sketch. I'm going to use the spline tool to create the uh, path for my handle. So the spline tool can create custom curvy lines. It doesn't do anything straight. So all the straight is, is every line that you click is going to have a curve to it. It's just a continuation, a continuous curve. So I'm going to go ahead and back step. And sorry, I went too far back. So with the spline tool, I'm going to purposely attach my starting point, make it coincident to the inside line of my mug so that it's attached to the inside wall, not the outside wall. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start towards the bottom. And you can choose to make whatever kind of handle shape you want to. But usually it curves towards the top, then it curves back in. So it goes up and then in kind of like an ear shape. And then attach it again to the inside wall. When you're done, you're going to click Escape. So that ends the process of creating a spline. Once you've created the spline, go ahead and escape out of any tools. And with the pointer, you can grab any of the points that you've created and just make some fine adjustments if you want to. So all these points are adjustable. I'm just trying to make a nice curve. And you'll see towards the end of the spline, the starting point and the end point have what's called a handle. And this can adjust the curvature of that starting point, that starting curve, or the end curve. You can grab the handle and stretch it out. It's kind of like that handle has a gravitational pull. It's going to pull it towards the handle. So I'm just going to choose to put it somewhere around here. Nice. So this is the path for my handle. I'm going to click the check mark. And so even though this looks like it has some sort of substance to it, a line doesn't have any thickness to it. So that can't be a solid. So the next thing we're going to do is create a new sketch plane. And actually, sorry, we can't just choose one that exists yet. We have to create the plane. So first, I'm going to use the plane tool. And there's several options when you select a plane. And I'm going to choose, I think the offset is the default. I'm going to change that to curve point. So in order to choose a curve point, you have to have a curve and an end point. So it just says that when you hover over this light, light blue area, it says curve point plane requires a curve and a point. So I'm going to choose the curve that I just created for my handle and the end point at the bottom. You could choose the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter. So now that I've chosen those two things, it has created a plane perfectly perpendicular to the end point of my curve. So I'm going to go ahead and orbit just so you can see what that looks like. So that's my plane and it's perfectly perpendicular to the end point of that curve. So now that I have a plane, I can now draw on that plane. So I'm going to click the check mark because all I've done there is created a drawing plane. And now I'm going to create a sketch and choose as my sketch plane 
the plane that I just created, plane one. Okay, now I can draw, and I want to reference the end point. When I create, I'm going to go ahead and right click and view normal to sketch plane. This will align my view plane to that, so I can now see it straight on. And I'm going to create a oval shape. So in the circle tool, you have the ellipse option. When you click that end point, I'm going to actually orbit so I can make sure I'm choosing the correct point here. So that's not the point. That's a point of origin. I want this point here, the very end point of my handle. I'm going to click to start my ellipse there. And this is created by first determining one length, so the wide point here in this instance. So I click there, and then the height of the short side in this scenario. And then I click, and I can always go in and change the values. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension it so I have the option to change it later. So I can click and place a measurement for the short side, enter, and then click again on the long side, and then press enter. So these are my two current measurements. I want to make this nice and easy to remember by making them 5 by 10. And you can choose whatever measurements you'd like. Now that I have a shape, a profile, I can use this shape to do what's called sweeping the path that I created for my handle. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark because I'm done with my sketch. The next step is to sweep the path. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep, use a sweep tool, and it needs to have a face or sketch region to, to sweep. I'm going to choose my oval shape. Then it needs a sweep path, so I'm going to switch over by clicking on that little pink box area. I'm going to click on that, and now I can select my path, which would be the spline that I created for my handle. So now I've created my second solid, which is the handle. So now I have a part one and a part two. I'm going to go ahead and reveal part one so I can see how the handle interacts with my mug. All right, so now I have the handle, but you can see on the inside here, there's a little bit of overlap. And just for an example, let me see if I can do this really quickly to show you why we did it the way we did. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark, and you don't have to do this part, I'm just going to show you an example of why we did the sweep, I mean the um, spline the way we did. I'm going to go into sketch two and let me hide my part real quick. And let's see if I can move this. Let's go ahead and delete this so I can move it. And I think now it's attached there. I'll click the check mark. So now you can see, let me reveal part one. So now you can see why it was important to use the inside wall and not the outside wall. Because now you can see there's a little gap there because it's this, the spline attached to the outside wall doesn't penetrate through the outside shell. So now there's a little gap there which is no, no good. So I'm going to go back into my sketch and fix that again. Go ahead and remove this and move it back in, attach it to that wall. Click the check mark. Okay, so now it's going all the way through the exterior, but it's also penetrating through the interior wall. So that is a problem that we can solve. So the next step would be to trim the excess off. All right, so I'm going to use the trim tool. I think it's called trim, it might be called split. It's called split, sorry. 
So I'm going to use the split tool. And the way this works is you need to cho choose your part that you want to split first. I want to split my handle. And then the entity to split with, I'm going to highlight that pink area. And now I can choose the entity that I want to split with. I'm going to choose the outside wall. Actually, let's go ahead and just choose the inside. That way there's solid inside our cup area. So I'm going to click on the inside wall. That's going to now cut off the excess that's hanging on the inside. You can see that I've created extra parts here. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. Actually, let me go back into that because there's a important things in this menu here. So in here, the option to keep tools would be to keep the mug surface that I used to slice my handle. I do want to keep my mug surface. So that option, I would recommend just keeping that checked in most cases. Um, and then keep both sides allows you to keep the main handle and also the little bits. And we're not sure which sides Onshape would choose to keep for us. So I like to keep that checked so that it keeps all the solids. And then I can choose later which ones I want to keep. So I'm going to click the check mark. And now that I have the extra parts here, I know part number one is my mug. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that for now. And then parts two, as you scroll over one, it's going to show you which part that is by highlighting it in yellow. So my part two is just a little tiny, this little tiny piece right here. So I know that I can either delete part two or just simply hide it. I'm going to just hide it for now. And then part three is the other little part that's at the top. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. So now I'm left with my trimmed handle which for my project is part four. It may be a little bit different for your project, but as long as you have this result with a trimmed handle, that's what we're going for. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is reveal my mug, and I'm going to unite these parts together using the Boolean tool. The Boolean tool is found at the top, and it's the two overlapping circles. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I want to union, not subtract and not intersect, I want to union two solids. So I'm going to choose part one, which is my main cup, and then I'm going to choose part four, which is my handle. And you can see right away it's combined the two parts together into one part. I'm going to click the check mark. So now I've created a nice looking mug here. All right. So the next steps are going to be to create a design. And there's multiple ways to do that, but I'm going to choose one specific way that I think is the easiest. I'm going to go ahead and hide my mug, the solid part. And I'm going to hide this custom plane that I created just so it's not visible anymore. But I'll, I will keep my outline so I can see kind of generally what the shape is. All right, I'm going to sketch on the front plane. And from this point on, you could be creating your own you know, artwork. I'm just going to choose to create something very simple just to give you an example of how um, the process works. So I'm going to create something with a line tool. I'm just going to create a cross. So I'm going to go ahead and start at the top and then create a small end here and then make sure that this edge is connected here. So I want to make sure I'm referencing that and then this will be a longer edge here and I'm actually done at this point. I'm going to press escape. Okay, so this cross should be mirrored on the other side. So I'm going to choose the mirror option, select the mirror line, and then go ahead and select all the lines that I've drawn so far. And there's a specific reason why I didn't 
draw the top line. Um, I'm going to fill that in now. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the top and then also fill in the bottom. And what I want is for this to be symmetrical, I'm going to choose the equal constraint and make the top line and the side line equal. That means all of these, these lines here are all equal. So the top, bottom, and both sides are equal. Okay, now I can modify this by changing the dimensions if I want to. So I can dimension this line and make it five millimeters. And then you can choose to, if you want this to be its you know, different length, this could be five millimeters as well. And let's say I want the overall height to be different. Let's make this 30. Um, actually, this needs to be taller for that to work. Let's make this 10. And then I need to dimension this line here. Let's make this also 10. That's 50. Well, that's too big. Okay, something like that. And let me go ahead and escape out of any tools, and I'm going to go ahead and just move it up slightly. All right, so I'm going to click the check mark. So your artwork can be something completely different. It could be much more intricate than this. This is just something quick and easy to get started. The next steps, once you have a two-dimensional region to work with, would all be similar, but your artwork will be different. I'm going to click the check mark to accept that. And then what I want to do is extrude this. And I want to make sure that it's going through my mug surface. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal this. And then I'm going to choose to extrude. And then I'm going to choose sketch four. Now, if you have multiple regions, you might want to select one region at a time. But I'm going to go ahead and select sketch four because there's only one region to extrude. And then I want to make sure that it goes all the way through my mug surface. So that's fine. So now I'm going to click the check mark. And the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this off where it intersects the surface. So I'm going to use that split tool again. Actually, hold on a second. One very important thing. So in the extrude, it assumes that I want to add, because the solids are intersecting, it assumes I want to add this to my mug. I don't want to add it to it. I want it to be its own solid. So I'm going to click the option for new. That means they aren't connected. They're separate. Even though they're intersecting, they're separate solids. I'm going to click the check mark. So now I can split. I'm going to go ahead and choose the split option. Choose the parts first. So the part that I want to split is my artwork. I want to click that to select it. And then I can move on to the other box where it says entity to split with. And then I'm going to choose the outer surface. So just hover anywhere over the outer surface. And then I'm going to, now it has created two new parts down here. So one is existing on the outside and one is on the inside. I'm going to click the check mark because I'm done splitting. All right, so now I have an inside and an outside solid. I'm going to go ahead and hide the inside solid. You could actually delete it because we're not going to use it, but I'm going to go ahead and hide it. So all I'm left with is the outside surface. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to choose to use this solid to basically stamp the surface of my mug. I'm going to like engrave something in it using this. So in order to do that, I need to move this solid into the wall of the cup. 
So I'm going to use a tool called transform to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and find the tool which is found in, so it's not there. Let me see, where are we? Okay, here it is. It's its, its own thing in mine. So it may not be if it's um, set to wrap or decal or if it's hidden somewhere, just click around until you find transform. So in this, you have the option to choose what you want to transform. And then I'm going to choose to translate by XYZ. This gives me these little arrows I can use to move my object around. I want to move it in to the wall. So as soon as I grab one of these arrows and start moving it, you can see which one I'm adjusting. So I'm adjusting the Y. You can see it kind of moving inside there. And I don't want it to move in too far to, pu to puncture. I just need to move it in slightly to make a stamp or like engrave the surface of my mug. So here it is pulled all the way out. I need it to go in about 1.5 millimeters. 1.5 on the Y. Okay, so now it's actually just inside the surface of my mug. Okay, now I'm going to click the check mark. And the next step is kind of a bonus. I would like to have this artwork on both sides of my mug. So no matter which hand I'm holding it with, you can see the artwork. So the next step, I'm going to mirror my solid to be on both sides of the mug. So I'm going to choose the mirror option. The entities to mirror are going to be this solid. And then the mirror plane, oops, sorry, I didn't choose that for some reason. There we go, part five. So then I'm going to move to the mirror plane, and here I'm going to reveal my planes so, I, so you can see visually what the planes are. So the plane that I want to mirror is the front plane. I can see the front plane right here. That's the midpoint. I want this cross to be mirrored on the other side over here somewhere on this side of my mug. So the dividing line is the front plane. So now I'm going to choose over on the left the front plane as my mirror plane. So now that I've chosen that, it's mirrored it on the other side. And in this tool, there's the ability to add, make new, or subtract. I don't want to add, that would mean that these things would actually be welded to my existing mug. I want to remove, actually I can do this in the next step. So let's go ahead and just click new so that I have two different solids interacting with my mug. All right, click the check mark. Now we're done with that. So now I have part five and part six, which are going to be used to engrave my mug. So the last step in this would be to choose, I'm gonna go ahead and hide my planes real quick so they aren't so confusing. I'm going to choose the Boolean tool. This time I want to subtract. So I'm going to choose subtract from the options. The tools, I'm going to click both of my artwork, my two crosses. And then I want to target, so I'm going to use those to subtract from the mug. So you can see here it's showing you visually what that will look like when I click on the check mark. That is exactly what I want to have happen. So now I'm going to click the check mark to accept that. And now I have successfully created some artwork on the surface of my mug. So those are the steps that I would like you to try to do on your own. So your mug should look similar as far as the skills that you've learned and applied to your project. But the mug shape itself, the handle shape, and the artwork that you choose to put on your mug should look different. All right, have a good time. That's it.